welcome to the Verge Cast After Hours at CES 2014, wow, what, presented why? live from Don't beautiful do downtown Las just, Vegas, Nevada, in the heart of the Bible Belt. There I'm, are no Bibles in Nevada. I'm Josh. By state law. I'm Josh. They, they were all thrown away when they invited the hookers in. <laughs> I'm Josh Topolsky. I'm I'm just ashamed. <laughs> and I'm Casey Newton. Casey, Casey yeah. Newton is here, everybody. Check him out. Yeah. Take a look at that. Behold, let your brain soak it in. Let your eyeballs soak it in, and then <laughs> let that information travel into your brain. Yeah. Uh, so we're at this Vergecast, uh, Vergecast uh, after hours. One day one. Day day one of, of the CES. real CES. It's like day four of me being awake. We've been doing this for what seems like thirty six thousand years. That's correct. I'm gonna drink and, this tiny beer. And uh, we're having some drinks. We're getting loose. Mm. Uh, some situations have occurred today. I, we went to the show floor today. Uh, uh, is that what I look like for real? Can you get that? Is this what I look like? A guy? I look like a guy who's gonna go gamble. Yeah. Hello. I don't know. Like what a, am I doing? In a, like a cozy this is a, way. This is a, this is a is great. Cozy gambling this is a the thing? only time during the day that I see myself. Do you know that? I, this is the first uh, time, and I'm shocked by what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's upsetting. It's gross, and uh, and uh, I should be put in jail. Is cozy gambling a thing? You look like you're going to gamble in like a cozy. Cozy thing. gambling, like there's a fire roaring. Yeah, you're like a, you get onto like a Chesterfield, a yeah. and they roll over a slot machine. Yeah. With a gold leather, like a, hand, a gold. Thing with a leather wrap, and you pull You're it. Watching your and instead movie. of it, instead of going very fast, it's very slow. Right. Yeah. No, that doesn't exist. Well, Anyhow, so we had a big day today. At, another. At, at, I mean, just at today was the. This is one of our best days. It got real today. It got really real. Yeah. In, in, in a variety of ways, it got real. Yeah. So yeah. we should start. I mean, the day. I'm trying to look at all the news that happened here. You I'm, I'm already overwhelmed, and I want to kill myself. Mm. Um, but I think today really started last night, and it started with wow. this story. Um, That's true. It started at 3 in the morning, as far as I can tell, when T-Mobile CEO John Leisure was kicked out of the AT&T party. Hold on. This Is happened. it John Leisure or John Legere? I've been saying Leisure. <clears throat> I think it's Legere. Yeah, but... Are you saying like John Leisure? You think he's the kind right. of guy who has rules? Because I don't. I think that when it comes to rules, John Legere ain't having them. He's not. <clears throat> he's, right. Look, he's, he's about unlimited data. So he went to go see Matt. Did you say he's about unlimited data? Is that what you were going to say? That's all he cares about. <laughs> unlimited <laughs> data. He's a wild Unlimited man. freedom. It's all about unlimited data. Uh, no, he was kicked out of his party last night. So yes. like, And he has an announcement tomorrow. So this news like broke at like 2 in the morning. He went to go see Macklemore at the, at, the, at the AT&T party. He was wearing a pink shirt. A Can I just say shirt. the most shocking part of this whole story is that he's a dork who still does the bunny ears in the photo. <laughs> With Roger Chan. I'll tell you what's most disturbing is that is that you know 45-year-old CEO of T-Mobile thinks doing bunny ears on somebody in a photo is mm -hmm. cool. Well, I'll tell you, there's a huge correlation between bunny ears people and Macklemore fans. Yeah. So, it's right. true. Yeah. Macklemore is like the, the living embodiment of somebody doing bunny ears in a photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyhow, go on. Anyway, but he has a bit, so that this news like happened. It, by the way, it's Macklemore. Macklemore? It, I say Macklemore, but it's apparently Macklemore. Do you know this? Carry on. It doesn't matter. Once I've had a couple of these tiny beers, it's not. It's all going to fade away. In it's the just going to be a slur, uh, slur of an M sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Werewolves. Followed by projectile vomiting. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so you got, but he's got a big thing tomorrow. So to, all day today, that, like I've been hearing about, like just the here and there about this dude getting kicked out. Because I don't think AT and T security knew. Who I think was. it was planned. I think, I think they plan. just thought he was a Bon Jovi. I fan. think he, he went there. Their party. I think he went there. He took a bunch of photos doing bunny ears on people. Security <laughs> saw and they're like, <laughs> these guys harassing our patrons. <laughs> yeah. And they kicked his ass to the curb. No, yeah. they, they I love. Been. I love him though. He's great. But Ro you know, Roger Chang said that AT and T was not happy he was there. At least that's what Roger said on Twitter. Yeah. But I understand that Ralph De La Vega um, personally. Per personally. Personally, well, once he once he got out, you know how in the movies there's always like the club manager who's like, and I don't want to see you back here. <laughs> that was in this case, it was Ralph De La Vega. Yeah. yeah, he does seem like he has the look of a guy who would do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. All right, so that was that. Then this morning we started with Sony. Uh, Sony went all out, and I will say, Sony. Yesterday we did their, their official press conference. What is the story this year with everybody having several press conferences? I don't know. I Here's my I have a theory about it. The CEA, this was a slow year for CES. I believe it is a slow year. Did they announce like like record numbers year. or anything? Oh, they do that after. Yeah. I think it's a slow year. I think that they had slots open and could not fill them for keynotes mm. and events. Mm -hmm. And I think they were like, hey, what if you guys did two keynotes? Two for well, the no, price the, of one. The nighttime keynotes have always been. Two for the price been, of one, that's right. The official CEA nighttime keynotes have always been completely devoid of any news. They've always been about spectacle and loving the industry. Like, M Microsoft used to have the opening keynote for years. They Generation Mobile. 
uh, right, Qualcomm, God only knows what that was. Uh, and no, so, I, I think God, God and other people know what it was. It was the most awesome <laughs> keynote God of all time presented by Dr. Paul Jacobs. Yeah, <laughs> who's sadly on his way out. Um, well, I mean, no, he's... You know, everything changed for Qualcomm after that day. Like, it seems like that keynote sealed Dr. Paul Jacobs' fate. Like that was the height of, like, right. of arrogance. Try, try explaining that one to shareholders on the earnings call. Yeah, we spent $2 billion and it made no sense. I can't wait to see the behind the music on Qualcomm. They're like, at the height of, <laughs> the height of drug abuse and vanity, yeah. but so Dr. Could, Paul Jacobs took to the stage and <laughs> brought yes. Big Bird with it. It's a man in Big Bird. <laughs> A man, <laughs> a, a man yeah. Big Bird, a Rolls Royce. Uh, who is There's that? woman, Desmond the Tutu. woman from Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who just looks scared. And like you could name anything right now, and people would be like, "Yeah, that happened." <laughs> right. Be like a unicorn that mm. killed an elephant. Like so, that's, but there's yeah, been, that's occurred. On but stage. there's been none of that here. It's all been like Sony's thing was like, "Here's a lot of products," and then yeah. today we were expecting kind of a kickoff CES morning thing. And Cause actually came out and announced a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so it's cool. It's really cool. Like wow. the coolest stuff I think cool so if, far. If, cool if working. Well, yeah. yeah, but PlayStation now works. We haven't played with it, so that's we bought now. Gaikai, yeah. and now it's streaming, so you can stream PS3 games to all kinds of things: Sony TVs, Blu-ray players, Gaikai tech, um, all over the place. Um, so that's cool. Like people are really into it, um, and everybody who I've seen who's played with it really likes it. Um, they announced a live TV service, like an internet TV service, yeah. which, as far as I can tell, is does it have it, it, consists it, it, right now of just an icon and a slide. The internet service does not have a name. It's no, it's going to be like Sony Video Unlimited. Yeah. Or Sony Entertainment yeah. Unlimited, like whatever yeah. their names and then, are, and bundled into it. Short, short throw projector. And, the, and then they announced this crazy, crazy stuff. This, this, uh, this life. What is it called? Life OS or something? No, it's where is it? Life OS. Uh, I have it. God, all the names are really bad. Uh, it's called Life Space UX or Life Space Ox. That's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, Life Space Ox. So yeah, Life Space Ox. So there, Sony has all these like crazy laser projectors that only need basically a little over two feet. To put up like 120 inch images. Yeah. And so the I went and saw it just now at their booth. It looks I, like a piece of furniture, but not a great piece of furniture. Mm. I was surprised. Like it looks like kind of like my air conditioning unit. A little I was bit. surprisingly or like, like the back of a Testarossa. Mm -hmm. So that whole white thing is the unit. Yeah. Oh, so it's gonna be like fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, I mean that I mean, it's a prototype. Right? I was surprisingly impressed by the short throw projector. I heard them say the word projector, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Right. And then they showed what it does, and I was like, yeah, this is cool. I want one. Um, I spoke to Kaz Harai mm -hmm. uh, earlier today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know Kaz know, a little bit. Kaz and I go way back. We yeah. hit the links sometimes together, uh, mm -hmm. shooting uh, shooting our golf balls. Oh yeah, like you do. All over the place, mm -hmm. just firing at <laughs> people. Yeah. And uh, so he did some interesting stuff. First off, he he, he dissed you hard. Yeah. Um, he said so. This is really weird. He was like. We don't. I was like, "What's the deal with Cloud TV? Like, how? What kind of partnerships are you going to strike?" They couldn't. They wouldn't want to talk. Any anyone say anything about partnerships? Um, he says we don't want to compete with cable TV. We want to integrate. It really sounds like what the Xbox One is doing, where it's trying to integrate everything into a single place where you can yeah. kind of watch whatever you want to watch whenever you want to watch it. But um, it, you know, it didn't sound like there was going to be a pass-through solution. Right. So one of two things. He was like, we don't want to compete with cable companies. Then he was like, well, maybe with live TV we'll compete with co cable companies. And it's like, well, what else is there beyond like... Nobody has an answer for Stuff this. that isn't live TV, which is readily available for everybody. Yeah. And then the other stuff, which is live TV. It's a... I mean, nobody has the answer and he's probably lying. Like, that's the... I, but they can't do pass-through, so my guess is they're either going to like try to strike some deals with some... Straight up with content providers like ABC... Is going to give they, them their they, ABC channel and do live. But they can't. I mean, like, like if Sony could pull that off, then Apple would have been able to pull it off a year ago right. or two years ago. Like, this is what the, Intel just abandoned. Right. So let me, wait, let me, hold on. Right, but let me let well, me just offer point. you a problem. But he right? made a point. But no, but here's the problem. Like right. here, here it is. I don't want to hear his point. You're you're, uh, you're Sony, right? And you mm -hmm. want to start this stuff, and they're like, man, table stakes to get television to people. We need the big networks. Okay, let's go talk to ABC says yes, CBS says yes, they want to see the others. Oh, we should go talk to NBC. You know who owns NBC? Comcast. Yeah. You know where you just hit the brick wall? And you're done. Like that's Sounds the to end. Me like that. a little bit of a monopoly. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. Nobody watches any of those stations anymore. No, they, More they're, importantly, they're the, the no, vast know, majority of the watch. But yeah. but here's the thing. I think um, the Maybe argument like in a he, depressing way. The argument he made is true when you see their their like CBS is the number one. I mean, when you see their right. output. Yeah. Have you ever watched uh, Two and a Half Men? <laughs> Religiously. It's crazy. Yeah. You're, you're into it. It's like being on another planet where 
everybody is super dumb. <laughs> so it's like CES. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit like CES. Um, but here's, here, his argument was we have a huge installed user base. We have PS3s and 25 million homes in the US. Yeah. So I think that they're, and which was interesting is that he wasn't like, this will be our next gen thing. Mm -hmm. He was like, we're going to bring this to several different devices. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, maybe there's deals to be struck with these cable providers. Right. I don't know. Maybe they're the ones who can crack it. Maybe it's, they're like, we're already making this stuff and they sold 4.2 4 million yeah. PS4s. You know, they're, they're approaching, what, 30 million units sitting, mm -hmm. just sitting around people's houses? That's, right. that's not nothing. But it's super that's hard it. for these hardware companies to offer services, right? Like, so finally, you know, a hardware company like Sony, it's getting religion about services. We have to offer people more than just the yeah. hardware. But, like, look at Apple falling all over themselves to create services that are yeah. worth our and money. They I think, can't do it. And they can't do it. I think Sony's going to run into similar problems. I mean, I yeah. hope they don't. But. But, but, but Sony's thing is, like, they at least, right, like, they make Breaking Bad. Like that's a Sony Pictures product. I, mean, I guess they, they could movies. leverage. I guess they could. I mean, look, there's all contracts. Hypothetically, Sony could leverage their content and say, "Listen, you scratch well, our backs, we'll scratch you." No, but they already do. So when you buy a, the only company that does that can possibly do this is Sony. When you buy a Sony 4K TV, it comes with movies. They just give you a hundred and like here's a box. Yeah, but that's, that's because that's because they're like, what else are you gonna play on this? But thing? like Samsung this, doesn't. Do hunk that. of crap that There's doesn't no way do to, anything. But, but I'm saying, like, Samsung cannot possibly do that. You haven't seen the Samsung films? They're really good. <laughs> they're like they're like exactly like the Sony movies. What happens if you Google Samsung but, films? But slightly different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> man! I went and played the Samsung tab. Wait, hold on. Let's yep. get to that. Wait a second. I want to. So Kaz also said, 4K mainstream adoption, five to seven years away. Yeah, I heard uh, 2016 from somebody today. Like there, I mean, 2016 not, is extremely 20, generous. That's 2016 two years from is not mainstream adoption. Yeah, 2016 is like you know maybe like a quarter of the sales. Well, he was yeah. What is interesting is that he was very upfront about. It. He was like, "How long did HD take?" Yeah, it was like, it was it like a, decade, a decade. Yeah, you know, and, you know they were the guys that the Sony guys were even you know willing to say like, "Look, even five years ago, HD did not. Yeah. It just started to get picked up by That's true. the cable companies." You know, right. so you have to think about the the map. I mean. I'm not like gloating or anything about the lack of of, uh, of yeah. What you, what you want is crappy pictures. You want to look at bad things. I don't care. And uh, I just want my as long as you give me season seven of Breaking Bad, I'm a happy guy. Okay, that's yeah. all I want in life. Um, but anyway, I just don't think. Um, he, Walt, Walt. Oh, I oh, oh, I almost spoiled. Yeah. I almost I almost gave it away. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's not give it away. I look weird. Today. I thought you were gonna say something about Walt. Going on for a second. I mean, every time I catch a glance at myself in this thing. They say the camera adds 10 pounds, but it's also making me look like, like a mutant. Hmm. Yeah. The camera adds 10 pounds and also a slight vampire effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and werewolves. Yeah. A werewolf. I would say if, if I do kind of look like you know, there's a werewolf quality to my face, but also it's vampiric. Right. Due mm. to its paleness. Um, so like, like, like a Dracula and a werewolf made uh, love. So right. Kaz announced all this stuff, and we ran a, a supercut of Kaz, and the title we put on it was Weird Sony is Back, right? Because I. Last year and the year before, Kaz really like started talking. You know, he took over as CEO. Yeah. He, like cleaned up. He announced one Sony. Yeah, they he was always like they restructured. They slimmed down. They slimmed down. There's, he's, he kept on talking about challenges and like, yeah. exchange markets and currency problems. And this year he's like, we've got to make things that are great. We can't make things that are commodities. And like, their weird it ideas was, about things are maybe they're not the right ideas. Like maybe you don't want a piece of furniture that's a projector. Yeah. But I'd rather have Sony trying to make those things than not. I, I said, I tweeted that the aspirational Sony yeah. is back. And I remember talking about... Uh, I mean, it really does look like the back of a tester or so. Yeah, I remember talking about Sony's, the aspirational quality of their products. And they've even taught, they've even said that. I, that's where Sony came to dominate. Right. Was making, saying like, we're not going to make the commodity stuff. We're mm -hmm. going to make the special stuff. But I asked them, I said, um, in that same meeting, I, didn't, I have a bunch of quotes and a bunch of things I didn't actually write up, but I asked Kaz um, how they protect themselves. You know, let's say in five to seven years, panels are going to be cheaper. Other companies like Samsung and LG are all doing 4K. Everybody's doing 4K. Mm -hmm. So how do they protect themselves in 4K the way they did not protect themselves with HD? Which is like clearly Sony was on the cutting edge of television technology for the longest time. Right. And then all of a sudden, China happened. 
you right. know, Korea happened, and you have these, you know, much cheaper panels. You have companies like Vizio coming in mm -hmm. and just pulling the rug out from under them. And I was like, how are you going to ensure that that doesn't happen again with 4K? Clearly, they're investing a huge amount of money and time and resources into 4K. And Cos was like really pragmatic. He's like, we need to be, you know, we've restructured, we've trimmed down. He's like, we want to be, we need to be able to offer the cheaper products, but not commodity pro, you know, not just the commodity product, and still do the high end and still be leading the way. And, you know, I think they are aware now, much more aware, thanks to him, of their position and how much more precarious it is. Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, it's not there yet. But. Yeah, but I think they know what to do, which is like a surprising moment for Sony. Like, they, I loved Howard Stringer. I never really got the sense that like he knew what to do about Apple and software and the internet, right? Like, you, you thought that? No, I always get the sense that he didn't. Oh, I think you I, I get the sense that Kazurai kind of knows what to do. It, right. He seems like he seems like there's a vision there, and they're working through towards something. Right. And whereas Stringer was like, I don't know what Stringer was all about. Stringer was about being awesome. He liked not movies. giving he seemed to really one like movies. single damn about anything. He'd bring Tilly McGuire out, no problem, no big deal. I, you know, I asked, I, I, while Stringer. you were interviewing Cause, I was interviewing uh, their new this the new president of Sony Electronics. So Phil Molyneux was like the longtime president of Sony Electronics. Well, these so, weren't quite concurrent because he was also in my meeting. But anyhow, go on. Oh, they were like they were they were, they were very like close a, together. They were like an hour apart. apart. That uh, would have been incredible <laughs> if it was at the same time. Look, there's a reason they replaced Phil with with Mike, and it's because he can be everywhere. That's too. He literally can. And I, you know. I asked him, and he's like, he was the one who put, he used to be the chief marketing officer of Sony, and he was like, yeah, I was the one who brought Taylor Swift in. And I was like, what happened? Like, why do you stop doing it? He's like, we really need to start focusing on what we can actually deliver people, yeah. and not like spectacle. He screwed up those and I, very And valuable. I told him that that was a huge mistake, because that Taylor Swift Sony keynote was, uh, it was like three years ago. It's the most important moment of your life. Well, it was just the audacity of Sony to be like, okay. We make 3D cameras and 3D TVs, so put on these 3D glasses, and then Taylor Swift is gonna come out. But don't look at her. Look at us filming her in 3D and then watch it over here. And everyone was like, no. And everyone took off the glass. It was a it was pretty cool idea though. It was explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Had it worked, it's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Okay, then after that. They talked about curved a little bit in our meeting. They did? They yeah. Said, they, did they, did they just diss it hard? They no, actually. actually he was they like, were, were sort of positive one? about it. Really? I just went and looked at a bunch of them. I cannot I, figure I, out I, one I, reason why I want I that. feel like somebody said in the meeting, once you've seen Curved, it's, it's hard to look at normal television. That might have been a diss on Curved. Hmm. Yeah. Might have been like, it's hard because Curved looks distorted and weird. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't we know went, Sony's. I don't Dieter and I just took a little walk on the show floor, and we kept on looking at the Curved ones, and we're like, why? Why? Because 3D's dead. Yeah. We also went to LG, where I texted a washing machine and a stove. Yeah. What um, did you text it? Was it a sext? I think we text. pics? <laughs> you know. Check well, this you, out. You know, like, that needs a clean. It doesn't have a phone number. You have to use a. Uh, like, you need to refill that, it needs to be put it in It doesn't have a phone number. You have to use an, a special LG app called Home Chat. Uh huh. Which just, so I'm already excited <laughs> that I get to download the Text yeah, Your Washing love, Machine app. Love, uh, and you, you can love. send it things like. Yeah, Terry, that sounds like that's going out. on my home screen. Uh, yeah, it's really it's really insane. The, even the woman who was like demoing it to us was like, yeah, I mean. I mostly texted things like, where are you? And then the washing machine texts you back, like, I wish I was free, which is hilarious. No, really? Yeah. If I'd had that demo, I would have asked for a written apology at the end of this. <laughs> I, oh, come on. What are we doing here? I mean, I, I, I what would you, t I don't understand. You know what? Let's just not. Yeah. We, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, I, I, I want to get All right. Here. So let's talk about what really so happened. So Sony, uh, wait, is there anything else that Sony No, I mean, they, Sony's like, they're, I think they're really ambitious in a way that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. They're probably going to bring out like something like a Laserdisc player next. Mm. Yeah, uh, Blu-ray, uh, Blu-ray laser. Can you imagine how much content you could fit on a gigantic the size of a laser disc? It's like 800 movies. Yeah, the, a blue disc. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about what really happened today, Casey. Yeah, the Yahoo keynote. Yahoo. Yeah, this was like, which I characterize, by the way, as nonstop flop sweat. <laughs> Just, just nonstop bombs. Well, Yahoo had and not moments. by like the drop the mic bombs, just like right. jokes bombing hard. The Yahoo yeah. keynote had moments of utter uh, sublime transcendence, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it had moments, mostly moments of me uh, screaming and rage, just being enraged or disappointed or. So sure. Casey was there. I, reverse, Casey, what's reverse laughing? I, Frowning? I think so. It's a <laughs> FOF, I believe it's called. Oh yeah, FOF. Frown, Frown, Frown on face. face. A lot of FOF today, <laughs> and not not really out of anger, but just the disappointment. <laughs> just like why is this happening? Yeah. But, I mean, so Casey, yeah. you ran the best live vlog ever. What happened? Thank you very much. So you know, if I'm going to say something 
in Yahoo's favor, it's the, the difficulty level for this keynote was super high. They're not a hardware company. The things that get us excited when we go to these keynotes is, hey, look, it's a new tablet, it's a new phone. And they got to come out and say, hey, we have a new mobile app for reading the news. Hey, we made an acquisition. Hey, here are some people from Saturday, Saturday Night Live. But I think- Did that happen? I totally that missed did. that part. Yeah. Uh, Where was I? So, you know, uh, uh, Yahoo owns the Saturday Night Live library and they stream it to uh, to their apps and on the web and they started showing a clip and then Marissa uh, came out and said, hey, you know what, it would be great if this were actually live. And then she brought out Cecily Strong and Keenan Thompson and they did a little weekend update bit. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I yeah. Totally. Every single one of these jokes bombed. Like, yeah. they delivered a well, line yeah. and it was like, just silence. Well, At one were point, they, were she they rolled funny? her eyes. No, she was like, what, what's his name? The 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 the, the Sumley guy's name? Uh, Nick uh, Dalioso is right. how you pronounce that. Dalioso. Yes. According, that's how Marissa Meyer pronounced it. So she was like, Nick Dalioso is a, a, he's a young man, and she's like, and all the ladies are like, is he 18 yet? Right. And then there was just dead silence. Well, I'll right. say this. Like, let me say this. Dead, let's, awful let's be, let's silence. Be, let's be honest. CES audience, not known for their ability to laugh. True. Or get yeah. jokes. And, and SNL is outside their wheelhouse, right? Like, Way outside. Yeah, you, like asking like. I mean, the biggest like, laugh uh, it was at the end uh, when dude was like, good job on that search engine and everyone exploded. <laughs> like you made a really good search engine and everyone was like, you just burned Yahoo with their own team. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I mean, it was, it was miserable. Uh, like, <laughs> it was mis every moment of that, like Katie Couric, like being a robot was, I don't know. Let's get into but, some real talk. Yeah. Let's talk about it. David Pogue. There was you know, there were some there, burns. Before DP. today, before yeah. today, I was like I like kind of tolerated David Pogue. He's a pleasant fellow. <laughs> After today, I just I have to say, he seemed genuinely unlikable today. And not just because he was dissing like so, all of the all of the sites so that I have he's a, now. I have like, a theory. No, no, with. this is I get it. He, he, it. I understand it now. I've gotten some distance. I had a tiny beer. Yeah. I figured it out. That was he was doing an Apple presentation. That's all he knows mm. in his heart. Yeah, like, what are the, no, it was no, like, it was what like, are the best like presentations a, I know? It was like a Apple. Checky Green. No, but he was, like, he was like, let me show, let me show you all the other sites and why they suck. Now let me show you what we're gonna do. And then it's like, dude, but you didn't. It's not an iPad. Yeah. And even on the the relative scale of things. That and there we, we are. And Badger, right. the urge. Can, can, the urge. can we just look at these puns? Hashtag yeah. hashtag the urge is. He's like moody. Yeah. He's moody. You nailed it, dude. <laughs> Knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. I have no doubt right now. The members of the Gizmodo staff curled into fetal positions, crying uncontrollably due to this yeah. harsh, clever diss. This play on their name, Giz Moody. They shut. Yeah, they closed up shop. Some um, of the worst, what's the point anymore? Some of the worst also, photoshopping the way, this as well. You, this, yeah. Listen, let me tell you guys something. Yeah. Our our word mark. Yeah. Is a altered font. If you really wanted to get this right, you'd have gone and found the font. Yeah. And put the proper U in there. Right. This is some lazy shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. What, is that like what? No, is that Futura? Like, what are we looking at? <laughs> he, like, yeah, I don't know. He it's on like his a, iPad. Like, yeah. Right. Could somebody <laughs> tweet the, the U font at us? I would actually like to know. Yeah. No, that's not what he thought. He, drew, yeah. he literally drew an orange hand square yeah. and then erased it into the shit. Anyhow, here's, so here's the deal. David Pogue was like, oh, listen, New York and California, amazing brainiacs. Middle of America, dumb shits who yeah. don't deserve our time, he labeled energy, them or attention. Mm -hmm. Normals, right. Um, he's like, we're going to make a tech blog for dumbasses like all of the people in the <laughs> middle of America. And here's the thing. Like, Here's what I'll say. All... All jokes aside about like our fake name and Gizmodo's fake name and everything, David Pogue is fundamentally incorrect about what he thinks about adoption of technology and understanding of technology in America. What he thinks is, hey, the mainstream is dumb and they need yeah. to be talked down to and, and uh, we need to dumb shit down for them because they won't get it otherwise. Here's what's happening. The mainstream is getting smarter about technology. Right. The mainstream understands technology better today than they have ever understood it, and it's becoming an integral, completely normal part of their lives. And so his idea that um, somehow we need to dumb this stuff down because they don't understand it is, yeah. only, is probably literally only based on the fact that Yahoo's readership skews old, yeah. and he's coming from the New York Times which I think specifically for him has an audience that his tech audience in the New York Times is, they have no idea what's going on. They're not, yeah. they're not, they're not young. They're not representative of like the core of American uh, consumers. Right. I and mean, I think at that, one point, 
it was just really weird because he literally divided America into red states and blue states. Yeah. And then he kind of like yelled at an invisible Obama for a while. Uh, like he was doing the thing like, I don't understand why you guys keep using these words like form factor. And it's yeah. like, A, I'm not there. B, right. I haven't done that in a long time. Well, the other thing is, the other thing that he did is that, if, I mean, if you look at the, you know, and not to get go down a rabbit hole here, but if you're a person with a brain who's read any of the sites that he mentioned, which is Gizmodo, and Gadget, The Verge, and uh, Recode, uh, Recode. Recode, like they're wildly different, yeah, distinctly different. Gizmodo does not do the same thing as Engadget. We do not do the same thing as any any of those sites. Recode is completely different. I mean, and I don't mean different like they cover different stories. They write differently. They have different types of headlines. Their coverage areas are different, and it's like. It was simplistic, it was insulting, and the most important part of what he presented, it was fucking wrong. Yeah. And I have to say, like, uh, you know, I, I didn't take to Twitter and say anything about it. Like, no, I'm, I not, I'm not going to write an editorial about it. I mean, frankly, everybody else on Twitter handled it for me, but it was <laughs> like, I would describe it as like a relatively odious presentation. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not insulted that he was making fun of us. He doesn't know what we do. That's pretty obvious to me. Right. But... Well, what he's, was it like in the room? But he's wrong. So here's what I. But he's yeah. wrong. I just say this: he's wrong about America. I agree. He's wrong about how people understand technology, and what he did was insulting to people rather than inclusive and exciting to people. Right. That's my opinion. Right. So, but here's because here's. Also, my I need another drink. Yeah, I also ask. Can I have another tiny beverage, please? Just yeah. unrelated Let's, to Pogue. Can we just get a picture or something? Uh, get yeah. a picture of vodka. So here's my question. So, yeah. there's been uh, kind of a, a theory, a, a meme mm -hmm. out there that. Marissa Meyer, she came in, she was a big celebrity, she's a superstar executive, she came in, she's the CEO, she started buying all these young hip companies, uh, she's going to turn Yahoo into a technological force by getting all this talent. There, there was an app we covered today, a news stream. Yeah, News Digest. News Digest. Wait a uh, second, I wanted to hear the mood in the room, are you getting to Well, that? yeah, I'm getting it, okay. which I think is very actually innovative, but it has some problems, but like it looks beautiful. Yeah. And then I feel like Poe stood in front of an audience of tech journalists and just burned all of that goodwill that she had stored yeah. up. So and what was it like? And also just sounded like not in touch with well, what's just, happening. Right. I mean, I think it was a bold move um, to go after the tech blogs, the way, or tech sites, tech publications, the way that he did. And in fact, some Yahoo people came up to me afterwards and were like, are, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I, I think I can, you know, deal with this burn. Um, <laughs> but, but, the most minor of burns. Right, right. Yeah. But, um, you know, certainly it uh, made us think about David Pogue a, a certain way. But, you know, I mean, as far as the mood in the room, prior to him, it had been sort of a little bit chilly, a little bit staid. It had been sort of Katie Couric talking to Marissa Meyer and sort of like polite hugs and air kisses. And then David Poe comes out and sort of goes into stand-up comic mode and he's trying to get laughs and he's talking loud and he's like punching his lines. He's doing some, uh, um, some Aces stuff, Johnny Shea. Yeah. Like the, uh, the, em the hardcore emphasis. Yeah, but everybody yes. loves Johnny Shea. Like, well, yeah, no, he's awesome. Yeah. I mean, but I'm just saying it was like the... Thank you. Wonderful man. Ooh, hey, I got beers here. for you guys. Hey, thanks. Hey, I'm taking I personally, this tiny cup. Yeah. yeah, just drink out of the... Oh, you're going for the... You're doing the tiny cup. Oh, boy. Casey's that's got good. manners. Is it a culture? Oh, boy. It's a San Francisco. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. No, no, no. Drink up and then tell oh, us what you really no. think. That's... Wow. Can we get that's this guy... That's beautiful. Uh, that's beautiful. Uh, I've never that's poured a beer into a, a cup that small before. We get Casey... <laughs> that's... We get Casey's towel. <laughs> that's just like a volumetric is challenge actually, right there. That actually makes me wonder. Are there non-moist towelettes, or they're just oh, towelettes? Yeah, of course. Paper towels. No. Oh, but is it? When does it become a towelette? Well, I think. Is it the moisture? I think when it's wrapped in a small packet. Yeah. I think it could be right. Anyhow. Yeah. Where were we? Uh, uh, you were just tell us that what? Yes. To what? Oh, he's asking you to in the turn your sets. He's saying he wants you to cheat out. To cheat out. Which What's is that? like you sort of yeah, like you sort of. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've cheated just, out. <laughs> John, I don't think you this has ever gone subtly for Is this what you, you like? it ever? Have you ever you trying to make this a seamless thing where I wasn't handing him a roll of paper towels? <laughs> this is great. He wanted you to cheat out of Neli's shots so I, love I could this. just give you these. Can we just see what it would look like if he knew what cheating out was? Can we just Okay, so now where were you where did you want him to cheat out to the yeah. Several feet. Where am I going? Not this way. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Let's see how, what you would have to do. Well, you guys aren't hearing which, which, yeah. what's in my and Josh's ears. It's the sound of John Locke Marcino dying. <laughs> just, just dying. This is for me, thank you. Great. Wow, we're really ruining everything. Who's is this? For Neli? 
He doesn't need this. Believe me. I'll he doesn't need a beer. Right. And right. Oh, boy. No, no, let me drink this oh, and talk about it. Becky, I think you know what's happening here, and it's not good. I'm going to, Josh and I are going <laughs> to cuddle tonight. <laughs> oh, no. That's not what I meant. <laughs> but it does sound nice, actually. It gets cold in Las Vegas. I just got it. I definitely right. just got a tweet that says, get to the meat. Anyhow, yeah, we need to get <laughs> to the meat. It's Let's never get. happening. <laughs> All right. It's hey, never. I, so, mood in the room. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me, hold on. I'll just cheat out. Yeah, just let me just cheat these towels over to you. Welcome to the Verge House Yeah. Just get this here like so. Nobody can see this. Very nice. Just doing this like so. Clean the oh, table. somebody sent us the U. Somebody sent us the U. The Thank what? you, AJ Gago. Yeah. Sent us the what? They sent us the U. Oh, we found the, the U? From the Verge. Is it, is it our? Oh, it's our real U. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you'd have done one second of searching, Poe, you could have find, found the real. He doesn't view. do searching. Normals don't find do the real well, you he sounds with like, Yahoo. Find the real you sounds like a great <laughs> slogan for a company that specializes in uh, digital meditation devices. Right. Okay, mood in the room, Casey. Yeah, so mood in the room. So uh, I think people were sort of taking it back, and mm -hmm. then I think, you know, frankly, his jokes seemed to fall a little bit flat. The SNL folks definitely got more laughs than he did. Maybe but that's not that, not that many. Not that many. Which is not safe, so that's not safe. I, I will say, I have to speak in defense of Kenan Thompson, who I believe is a national treasure. He, like, is, he is the greatest living Saturday Night Live performer who's currently on the show. I, I, I believe that is the case. And he, he really, like you, like, you could see how hard he was trying on no. his face. And yeah. he actually did make me laugh a couple times. Nobody I mean, when he, at the end, when he was like, the search engine joke, yeah. like that murdered. Yeah, no, totally. Like, Let me just say something. Yeah. Let's, let's see. CS is a tough crowd. You know why? why? People here don't know how to laugh. Yeah. Okay? They didn't come here to laugh. They came here to make I back room to deals laugh. on RAM. Right. Right. That, <laughs> that, they came here to check out the new steam machines. Right. I think of the Verge's mission here is really to teach people how to laugh. Don't you That's, think so? I'm, absolutely. I think it's yeah. not only to teach people how to laugh, but to teach ourselves how to laugh. I will say a, a, new, a new weird thing has happened to me this year at CS where the people in the booths are now ready for us. Yeah. Um, so I went into the Samsung booth and I was immediately accosted by people. We went into the LG booth and we were immediately accosted by people. Accosted in what way? Like in a friendly way? Or? Yeah, friendly. They were putting a cell. And yeah, they, 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 they're, they're ready for us and they're like, it used to be I would show up and like be relatively anonymous and like break stuff for a while yeah. and be like, now I understand it. Yeah. But now it's like a lot of people being like, let me show you these features. Mm -hmm. And that's very new. It's like, they. Un I think the CS has gone from being only about the backdoor RAM deals uh, to... Oh, wow to being really about the press. About the front door. Right. And right. that's what I think, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, front door uh, RAM deals. Yeah. Yeah. That's, my new, no, that's my new metal pan. No, wait a second. So, so then Pogue did his shtick. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Katie Couric was on stage. Yeah. I thought Marissa Mayer did a nice job. I did too. I mean, she's you, a I don't know speech. if anyone's dizzy in her, but I liked hearing her talk. I like her. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know what was refreshing? I actually emailed somebody at the CA. I was like, um, has, have we ever seen a female Keynoter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's only been one other. Is that right? Uh, 2004 and 2005, and her name is now escaping me because I glanced at the email during the Marissa Mayer thing. And at any rate, I can pull it up. But so they're very few and far between. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually, it was like just weird because it's, the show is so full of, like, right. there's so many dudes on stage yeah. and so many dudes. And look, you know, look, we have a lot of dudes at The Verge, you know, like, yeah. okay, you know, don't kill me. We're sexist. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're we, it's in our charter. Sexism yeah. is man, mandatory. Uh, man, man is in that. There's actually the a No Girls Allowed sign on the trailer. No Girls Allowed. Addie has been working in an Oculus Rift just outside the trailer. The whole uh, time. That's right. We, yeah. <laughs> She's in a virtual recreation of the interior of the trailer. She's just outside that's pretending what, that's she's how, there. That's how advanced we are in our sexism. You uh, know, yeah, anyhow. No, but it was it was great to have her there. And and I think uh, the best thing that Yahoo did was was that they had Gary Shapiro introduce her. Because Shapiro's so out of control. In, in 15 <laughs> seconds of Shapiro. No, that is just not no, Shapiro's accurate. Shapiro's off the hook. Sh Shapiro is the Shapiro's, most in control no, human Shapiro being in the entire Shapiro's world. Shapiro said the word innovation 11 <laughs> times in one sentence. And then it was like, and now Marissa Meyer. And just like the relief that you feel <laughs> when he leaves the stage. Like, uh, you could not be more excited about what's going to happen. Shapiro's my homeboy. I love uh, Shapiro. It was Carly Fiorina, HP. Carly Fiorina. Fiorina, yes, yeah. thank you. Oh, okay. Who HP went on to great success. Did not HP. end not well for Carla. Not a great, but you know what? She put gave gave her all. I mean, she, I, she it, put in the hour. It was cool that Yahoo was here. It just it's David Pierce said something at the end of it. He's like that. David Pierce, we who were, I consider to be our David Pope, if you really think about it. <laughs> wow. Right now, David, right now, David, if he's somewhere, watching, David Pierce he's just exploded. Dying. He's yeah. dying. Here's a here's a fact about the Verge. Are you uh -oh, ready? Wait, you ready for oh, it? Oh, you gonna dox David something? Pierce used to be David Pope's intern. 
Uh, Pierce we, was Pogue's intern. Uh, so is so is Joanna. We have a long policy of only hiring Joanna David Stern Pierce, or David Pogue's here. Too. Oh God. Joanna Stern is now at the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Also, Pierce also Pierce former Pogue intern. Uh, but David Pierce, his nickname uh, is DP2. And uh, I don't. I've, I, it's I don't, gotten to the point where he hated it so much, and now he just quietly answers. To <laughs> I don't. Want, I won't. Because uh, of the emotional toll it has taken. Is there body. something going on with my hair right now? Can you get back to that single? Guys, I'm looking at a picture of Doc Brown playing a fucking shredding shot. while wearing shadow. Google Glass. I don't know what to do. Let this be a lesson. Have you Can we put this joy? picture on the screen? Can we, Can get we Doc put Brown up? Doc Can Brown shredding while wearing glass I really in front of a sorry. DeLorean. I really feel sorry for people who are watching this. I have I to say. Too. Sometimes you think, what's it, what's it like to experience this as a third party? <laughs> David quit. And my impression is, <laughs> my, my impression is it's terrible. I just got uh, Can we see David Doc just Brown? out loud in the trailer said, I quit. <laughs> can we get Doc Brown on screen? So I will yeah, say, there's Doc Brown. My God in heaven. Can if I, I don't see this? Doc Brown on this This is what tells you what screen. CS is like. There are a lot of gimmicks here. It's Today I Brown. saw, uh, like, like, lady dancers dancing in fi inside of a gigantic fake Android phone. What's a lady dancer? They're dancers or ladies. Uh, I've seen, there's all manners of booth babes here. It's really weird. It's like the well, return of, course of the booth, booth. Oh, there we no, go. No, no, but it's like the just, return. But Doc Brown I'm and sorry, DeLorean. Can you just check the, check the headline here? I think it's it's, really <laughs> <good>. <laughs> it's it's sad and also very funny. But like this has been the greatest CES publicity stunt of all time. The yes. Back to the Future car with Doc Brown I, I, shredding in Google say, Glass. But I, but I will say this. I mean, I don't know if we'd have covered it if we weren't so close to it. I mean, yeah. the Gibson <laughs> 10 is is literally this car was parked. Like next to our, yeah. Yeah. Right next to our trailer, we're like, is that the DeLorean from Back to the Future? <laughs> these pictures are, did Michael do these? Yeah. yeah. These pictures are amazing. Yeah. yeah. They are amazing. I mean, really, the last one in particular this is, is sad. This is just not good. I mean, come on! <laughs> you have never seen Joy on a You know, you know what? God, like he looks a lot like Tim Cook in this picture. I have to in say. In the last one? Yeah. Where's the Tim Cook laughing picture? Could be a future. Uh, uh, I, I see what you're saying. Can we pull up the Tim Cook laughing picture? That's a, by the way, if you're looking for it in our, in our, in chorus, it's uh, Tim underscore Cook underscore laughing uh, dot JPEG. <laughs> cool, cool I JPEG. Don't, I don't think it is. There right. it is. Dude, come on. Yeah. They're totally wildly different. No, they're like, they're like scrawny white guys with white hair. They're wildly laughing different. Laughing maniacally. They're Get that wildly. Christopher Lloyd shot up. Can you, can, can, somebody, can we up. Photoshop a guitar into the Tim Cook picture? I think we can. I think someone can. God, I look so land. tiny and brown in this picture. Yeah. All right, like what that's else? Just, I'm just surround. So oh. Yahoo, let's talk. Let's, Sorry, Casey. It's yeah, going to be up here in a second. Just, no, yeah. I got real. They're just, racial. they're just doing. It's the only way I like. Back. All right, so let's <laughs> talk about some other things we haven't seen. No, all right, we don't have to. You what else about? happened? Let's talk. Can we talk about the self right. Oh my God! Come on. That's not. I don't. Yeah, that's uncanny. We Photoshop Tim Cook's head back a little further. That's uncanny. You know, actually, it kind of works as Dave Grohl is in that. Mm -hmm. So we pointed out Dave Grohl's neck to me in this picture, <laughs> and it's kind of out of control. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like, it's like. A Becky, little... why, why did your husband die in Las Vegas? <laughs> well, he began choking on a beer when been he been gazed common, upon Dave been, Girl's neck it might have been in a two-year-old photo. Can you zoom in on that? No! Can you brighten it? Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little What funky. is happening? I mean, I shouldn't talk. You know, my <laughs> neck probably looks like that under whatever's going on. Oh, you got a funky neck, dude. Oh, really? <laughs> really? That's not... Very nice. All right, Casey, what else happened today? Well, do we want to talk course, about this News Digest app? Because it's so interesting in a very specific yeah, way, so, right? So, yeah. so, so the, uh, the kid, Nick... Nick Dalioso. Dalioso, who created... He seems like a really sweet kid. He, he created he an app called Sumly. Yeah. He created an app called Sumly. Yeah. Yahoo purchased it for $30 million. Yeah. But not before Gizmodo publicly Gawker. shamed... Gizmodo or Gawker? Or was it Gizmodo yeah, it was or Gizmodo? I believe it was Gizmodo. Well, not, well, no, Gawker uh, published Not before it, yeah. Gawker publicly yeah. shamed a 15-year-old, mm -hmm. which to me is reprehensible on several levels. But uh, uh, that, but I digress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, by the, I just kind of just say, 15-year-olds are the worst, okay? Sure. They do tear... Do, if you knew me when I was 15... I'm bad now. Right. If you knew me when I was 15, you would have spit on me as soon as you could. <laughs> you okay? spit on you? You would have. You would have. You would have spit on me. Because I was so horrible. You have a, okay. I mean, I just, you don't spit don't, on people who are horrible. I didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, I guess. Like, that's I don't. Right. That's <laughs> fucking right. <laughs> Fuck. You didn't grow up in Pittsburgh. <laughs> mean streets. That is right. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Casey. Yeah. So here's why I think this app is interesting. We're talking about Yahoo News Digest. It's iOS only right now. It's US only Can't right now. We're switching back to like our serious. We're trying. I I honestly think it's worth talking about. So we live in this world where because of the success of companies like Facebook and Twitter, everybody has an endless stream, right? Like at any app you visit now there's just this activity feed that goes on forever and that. yahoo has developed several of these <laughs> that's, apps that's that's not it that's, that's, 
Yahoo Tech, which exactly, is an endless exactly. stream, right? So it, it just so looks it's, exactly it's, like it's our totally features page. But you know, never uh, <laughs> so then Yahoo comes along, and and uh, from what I have, uh, what I'm told, it was this this guy's uh, Nick's idea, this 18 year old's idea. He wanted to make the news more like a newspaper. He said newspapers, believe it or not, got one thing right, which was people like to finish them. They like I don't to know. By the way, I don't know how a 17 year old can possibly have any perspective about what newspapers got right, but I will say. He was right. Well, no, but I mean, everyone just keeps tweeting the Tim Cook picture at me. It's happened like four there times. You have it. I don't know. I mean, I guess a sense of completion. I don't. Have you ever finished an entire newspaper? Yeah, I mean, yes. have I've you ever read cover to cover every article in the yeah, newspaper? I've, I've, yeah. No one's I mean, ever read the classifieds. Because that's the thing. I think what's amazing about newspapers is that they are skimmable, and right. you don't have to finish them. Actually, but yeah, go ahead. But it's still at least a, it's a package of information and. And it's at least theoretically possible to finish it. We live in a world now where where there's this uh, idea that we should just overwhelm people with links. And all of the other big news reading apps on the market, I'm, I'm thinking of apps like Circa, like Prismatic, they, they just give you all of these links. And uh, I think this app is really refreshing because it's like you need fewer links. So we're just yeah. going to interrupt you twice a day and be like, here are 10 things you need to know now. You can skim through it in uh, you know a couple of minutes. And the design is really crisp. I just think it's a, it's a really interesting app. And now, Yahoo, the, the Yahoo, Okay. I'll just say Yahoo is not known for being a particularly progressive, like forward-thinking company. Company when it comes to product design, this app actually strikes me as ahead of the curve. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I played with it. You, yeah. you have uh, you showed me it a little bit, and yeah. like, it's awesome. I the writing, I, there's a weird robot writing thing going. Well, no, on. I haven't had a chance to use the app, but the um, the writing in it is not good. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's computer generated, right? Yeah. Explain to me how it works. Okay, so the uh, the Sumly algorithms that uh, made Dalioso a millionaire at the age of seventeen go out and they crawl the 30, web thirty times over, and they find uh, links and they they sort of um, aggregate these multiple documents and they uh, purge them down into one, um, and then you have this kind of text that summarizes the article. Uh, that's what Sumly used to do. That's still in this app. But this app goes further than that. It pulls in maps. It pulls in photos. It pulls in Wikipedia links. So if you want to dive the, deeper on a topic, of, you can. What's the level of human involvement in that? Uh, so what they've told me is that the same people who program the Yahoo homepage, so those people who are, who are finding news and are kind of curating that, they're working on this app. They're helping to curate those links. So the algorithms are basically presenting them with a menu. The human editors come in and they say, let's hit these 10 things. And they push them out on the web. But in the actual um, creation of an article, they're not writing. I think I believe that they're doing some kind of quality assurance stuff and making mm -hmm. sure there are no obvious uh, errors. And, and, are, and, and or is the app uh, attributing any of the sources? The sources are uh, sort of buried at the bottom. But if you want to see the source links uh -huh. for all the articles, you yeah. can tap. You can get them. I mean, it going. sounds like. Let me just say this, and, and I'm not trying to be a luddite, but it sounds like a terrible idea that is <laughs> going that is going to lead to widespread misinformation. And, because and, of it's because of the robot stuff. Yeah, but in more importantly, um, poorly written information, which I think is the greater offense. But I think it's also kind of lame that it's like, hey, here's all this information that well, real that real people put together, and we're going to just grab a few snippets out of it, turn it into a new thing, and push it out to you as a remix or whatever. Right. Um, I just don't think that that in that the transmission of intellectual information happens in like weird robotic ways like that. I think that you need people. I mean, maybe I'm biased because uh, we write we have a news we have a news website. Well, but where does we Circa have human editors? Spend Circa time. also has human editors. Yeah. So there's like a mix. There's a mix. Um, they're doing I think a little bit more no, Circa Circa's more like story streams where it's like it, it, it kind of puts together pieces from each article as like slices, mm -hmm. right? It's not trying to make like a perfectly readable article, right? Right? Am I crazy? Is well, I mean, it's a it's a readable article. The thing right. that Circa does that's cool that I I would like to see another app try is you can follow a story. So I used it during the government shutdown because like, I really you mean, like did. Like the Verge app. Yeah, like the like the Verge app, yeah. um, and uh, cheers to us for leading the way on that. But yeah. uh, but you know, Circa lets you cover <laughs> lets you follow stories outside uh, of the the scope of things that we write about. Right. Um, I don't know. It's it's, it's all right for that, but. You know, for the most it, part. I will say the design of, of News Digest is really awesome. Wait, yeah. It's a terrible name. I agree with that. That's the one thing. News Digest is really not like, oh, what are you, how are you getting your information? Oh, I'm using News Digest. I, I do wish know. they'd sort of try to create a new brand with this and just say, let's let's come up with something that doesn't just like, sound yeah, so plainly utilitarian. News. In, <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, News. Are they still using the exclamation point? Is that just going to be there for uh, I think so. They're, that uh, oh, exclamation point's die hard. We should talk about yeah. Aviate. Yeah. Okay. They bought Avi so Yahoo bought Aviate, which is a home screen replacement for Android. 
which I think is really interesting. I mean, at the beginning of the thing, I was like, oh my God, they're going to do a Yahoo phone. And now they basically have like the core of a Yahoo phone, mm -hmm. yeah. which is a home screen. Yeah, yeah. It, that's going to be super interesting to watch. I actually met with one of the founders of Aviate after the keynote, and one of the things he said that surprised me was the app, the Aviate's going to continue to be live. You can still go download it, right? This this sort of thing struck me as a prime candidate for just sort of being shut down and right. sent and to the Yahoo. It's like an works. aqua hire. Yeah, yeah, but they're going to they're going to keep it alive. They have a lot of things they want to try. What's going Can on? Can we get that on screen? Who did? Oh that? my God! Did you do that? Let's oh, God. Sitting here working on that. That's amazing. Give that to our guys. Um, yeah, they need to see that. I'll send it to you. You'll, you'll, you'll see momentarily. Yeah. Oh, you have it. Okay, if you have it, show it. Show it to me. We've got something really special for you. If our video guys aren't. Yeah. Here. yeah. This is where the promise of tonight's Vergecast comes true. Yeah, there we go. I mean, that. and I think you have to admit, no real break. Thank in you the to act. Howard Pinsky. Yeah. No real break in the action there. Completely seamless. <laughs> Not confused it at all, uh, but upset it. Making upset me it. so happy. All right, what else happened today? Oh God, so much other stuff happened. Not that today. much stuff. Not that oh, much Oculus, stuff. Oculus Rift introduced the new version. So I, I'm very confused with the new Oculus Rift. So it's yeah. the Crystal Cove. Um, Crystal Cove. It's, just, it's a more. I think it's a more. So, a more final. But they added. Well, no, no, it's not more final. It's a new version of Oculus Rift. It, it, it has some, some better sensors, some more sensors. Mm -hmm. You can but tell, it requires a camera now because it has LEDs and does head tracking. Uh, which it can, I, it can to tell me is, when, your head, when your body and head are in different positions. Wasn't Crystal Cove where Murder, She Wrote took place? That sounds like the kind of thing that o the Oculus Rift... Sounds like the kind of thing that Casey would definitely know. Yeah, how, how, how would you even possibly You know what? It was Cabot Cove. I apologize. <laughs> what's, what's Crystal Cove? Crystal Cove... <laughs> Crystal Cove... Uh, sounds like a like resort town. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely Crystal Cove is like where you go to like live out the rest of your days. Yeah, in a, in a really nice condo. Though. I don't know. Very it nice. sounds to me like Crystal Lake. Crystal Cove Beach yeah. Cottages, which yeah. makes me think of uh, Jason mm -hmm. in the Crystal Cove State Park and where Friday the Thirteenth. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think of people being murdered, stabbed to death, heads chopped off, uh, being dragged to the bottom of a lake. Only and that's a lot of the Oculus Rift. So also Oculus can uh, confirm that they're making uh, its own games. John Carmack joined. Right? Yeah, recently, a few months, a uh, month the ago Mac. or something. Yeah. The return yeah. of the Mac. So they're making their own wow, games, really? which I think is, um, to well, me. Carmac is there, so the you Oculus can make is games. Like, no, but it, it's very, it's just very strange. It's very, like, the Oculus was awesome last year. It's been a year. They have another one. They added some more, like, we can track your head in more ways. Like, it's more immersive. But there still is no reason to have one, as far as I there, can tell. There has yet to be. Here's uh, Addy checking it out. And you, I think it does look more sensitive in terms of its yeah. um, awareness of your head location and responsiveness. I'm sure, but, but it's like, but why would you want, like, that's their big problem, right? They, they invented a technology that, to me, is just insane, right? Like, it's the most, like, wild, futuristic thing that I've seen in a long time, yeah. right? Yeah. And I still kind of don't know why I want it, which is disappointing. Well, yeah, there isn't some killer app where it's like, oh my god, when you play this game using the Oculus Rift, it'll change yeah. your whole idea about what gaming is like. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think I think it's the potential is so huge, and their technology is so much better than anything that anybody else has shown off mm -hmm. at a consumer level, that you're like, well, that's going to happen. That, that game's going to happen, it just hasn't happened yet. Right. And with Carmack on board and $75 million in the bank, which is what, they just had a huge investment, um, it seems like they now have what they need to do that. But but, but it, they mean, need buy-in from other developers. Uh, yeah. They and they need, need a, they they need need a turn path. Into a platform. They need a path to a consumer product. Right. So right, now, right now, it's awesome. Right. I mean, we went crazy for it last year. We've been tracking it throughout the year. They've clearly become uh, a real player. I mean, a very interesting hardware startup. But you need the games, and you need support. I think support. You know, there are consoles that could support the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. I don't think Sony or Xbox or Microsoft are going to come out of the woodwork and be like, hey, we want to support your VR headset. Right. But it could be done. I think the closest they're going to get is Steam Machines. Right. And I don't want to get back into the Steam Machines conversation. No, I mean, I just, like... Boy, what a lazy show. <laughs> um, no, look, here's the thing with Oculus. Like, they have the biggest problem, right? Which is you've got to give up the, all of the things you're used to to engage their platform. And the only reason you're going to do that is if you get some insane benefit to doing it, besides this was weird and now I kind of have a headache. I don't know. I mean, if there was a really good zombie game you could play using the Oculus Rift that was right. like you were fully immersed in the world of zombies trying to eat 
the skin and flesh off of your bones. Yeah. If there was an email client and I could just shoot emails with a gun, <laughs> I'm thinking outside the box here. Why? <laughs> why not? You gotta try just, something new. Just look around. You know. Just, you know, it's weird because you know the, uh, that's. You funny. know why VR was invented, right? Was to kill kill email. No, I mean the, the, the original invention of VR was, uh, and and by the way, somebody will probably correct me, but I think I'm relatively right. Jaron Lanier, yeah. who's one of like the creators of virtual reality, was needed. I, I mean, I might be mixing up a couple of different stories here, but my understanding is that the creation of VR was that it was, be, it was used to look at extremely long uh, integers or numbers. Mm. And that like you couldn't, you, like a monitor couldn't do it. You had to yeah. keep like scrolling back and forth. You need to be able to like see the numbers at the beginning and the end or whatever, or like very large amounts of, of like, he was numeric like how do I make the numerical matrix? data so you would be able to pan and, and yeah. go back. And that's the reason, that's like the beginning of VR. Also, I could have just made that up. Yeah, so that I wouldn't sounds it out. completely insane. It's not. Can you check it out? I mean, what, check out virtual how you, reality. How do you go? Wikipedia search Why do I virtual a, reality just tweet it, slash Josh, yes or no. Yeah, just tweet yeah. yes or no, Josh. Just tweet yes or do no, you believe Josh. a story about virtual reality? Let's yeah. see what happens. So the other thing hashtag happens, vergecast. The other thing that happened today was MetaWatch just blew it, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell. I don't get this thing. MetaWatch gets the, the Virtu. Here's the new one. MetaWatch gets the Virtu designer. No, this makes complete sense to me. If you looked at Virtu phones. You're aware of Virtu phones, of course, so yeah. right? Super fancy. If you looked at those, and then you're like, what if that guy made a watch? You would land right here. Well, I will say this. very It's expensive, like a steampunk smartwatch. Very expensive, That's what this looks like to me. Very expensive yeah. watches are, totally. on a regular basis, totally offensive from a design standpoint. Like, like here's a $75,000 watch, and it looks like a pile of ass cheeks. Yeah. And not like sexy ass cheeks, bad ones. Yeah, pile of so ass cheeks is like every <laughs> other R. Kelly album cover. <laughs> like that's his new record. R. Kelly's pile of <laughs> ass cheeks. I love that record. Very sexy. Stuff. It's definitely, by the way, the the cover of his new record. Which is it a pile of ass cheeks? Well, the the yeah. It's black panties. Black panties. Yeah. Black panties. Is, by the way, black panties. I bet probably the second most popular color of panties. White. Just tweet yes White or no at Josh. Is that the most popular? What color is panties? what is the most popular panty color? Black or Where white? Where did we go? And let me ask you something. How did we get here? Are black panties always sexy? Another question I'd like to have answered. Reasonable people can. Disagree. Where are we at with the uh, with the my virtual reality story? True or false? <laughs> Does anybody know? A lot of nopes. Just I think, nopes for days. Can you just That's Wikipedia? Can you just Wikipedia? If I invented that story, somebody should turn that into a, a mini series mm -hmm. on the Hallmark Channel. That's the worst mini series of all time. It's great. But old men of, trying to look for oh, numbers. Young, they would have been young men at the time. We're talking in the 80s, in 1986, 85. John, let's go to the lab so I can look at longer just, numbers. Just, just tell me about the creation of our the history. worst you sequel to the real history. I'm looking. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, here we go. The worst. Here we go. Pioneers and notables. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. Yeah. Can we not have Wikipedia on this? Wait side? a second. Wait a second. This is the worst. This is Can the worst. Can someone read that to me? Do I can't see it Do you remember when we used here. to always online shop on the Vergecast? This is a thousand times worse. It was popularized by Jaron Lanier. All right. Yeah. I think you took that off because it's too controversial that We've I'm We've done right. enough here. Yeah. Sounds like I'm totally 100% right. I didn't make that story up at all. Anyhow. All right. Boy, yeah, Vergecast, Vergecast at CS is really living up to its name. Yeah. It's a real problem. Uh, uh, what else? We never talked about the MetaWatch. We, oh, yeah, the meta watch. we landed sorry. on I'm Black sorry. Panties, and then we started reading Wikipedia. Right. Oh, do we know? Do we have a? Do we have a result of the Black Panties versus White Panties sexiness level? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. It was, which is more popular than also our Black Panties always sexy? We're still tabulating the results. I think we, the, <laughs> we have a few, a few counties are still out. In I'm, I'm, I'm terrified to look at my Twitter. Mm. This will be Casey Newton's last day at the Verge. <laughs> will be flipping, Casey, flipping this gigantic table and leaving. I, Right after, had this. a wonderful Casey. Time. Would you <laughs> say that? Would you say that uh, this is what you expected? It was what I expected. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. The meta watch. It's super ugly. Can you talk about it, Josh? Say some words. Me? Yeah, you. This, uh, I was checking. Guy. I was just checking. Just, Twitter just react to this photograph. I mean, if you wanted to make a, if you wanted to make a smartwatch that it typified everything you didn't want in a smartwatch and everything that scared you about the concept of smartwatches, I think meta watch knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I think if they wanted to say to people who would never have bought a smartwatch in the first place continue not buying these things, Yeah, home run. Here's my new strategy for Vergecast at CS. Yeah. Josh, react to this picture. Yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> right. That's all I have to do. Um, here's the one thing they got right. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 
Do you, I mean, would you wear this? Uh, no, I would not wear that. That uh, it, it does not look like that much of an improvement from the little smartwatches that people would wear when I was in junior high. Just a lot of, uh, you know, tiny little numbers. Not a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. I mean, a lot of tweets right now, very yeah. few about panties. That's a shame. Wait a second, I haven't hit that portion. Josh, let me ask you a question. Are yeah. you unhappy, surprised, disappointed by that? <laughs> Wait, what, what emotion are you what? feeling about by what? your Twitter right now? <laughs> um, well, I just got to Tim Carmody, uh, our good friend Tim Carmody, uh, oh, just God. favorited an RLRT about my vampiric paleness. Oh, God. You're, you're so behind on your Twitter. No, no, no. I got to count. This is, okay. There's I a don't lot know of, you know I, don't, I don't know if you Before know. every episode of The Verge Cast, Josh and I have a, a tiny little lover's quarrel about whether or not he's allowed to have a laptop, <laughs> because he's not allowed to have a laptop. And oh, what he hasn't I, said now well, is a series, a series of ever-increasing, like, larger phones. <laughs> yeah, soon it's going to be, you know, have the, I'm going to have the, the, the <laughs> Galaxy Tab Pro. I don't even have 12 right point, there. Like, no, it's my phone. And then I'm going to put it down, and I'm going to get the keyboard dock out, and I'm going to have a <laughs> no! You're going to pay the price. It's slow, slow burning. Uh, right. So, you know, Josh, it's cool. Yeah. Wait, a second, wait, a second, yes. wait a second. Yeah. No, I yeah. don't want to know any of the answers to any of these questions. Black. Although I know it's so black. black. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. Wikipedia uh, says no. No. Wikipedia has the no, answer yes, to that question. Yes. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Uh, hold on. This one I really Does anyone would like to run 19, by the trailer and cut the hard line? Vehicle. Is that just a picture of R. Kelly? <laughs> 19, crying. 1920s vehicle sim, no long numbers. I don't know what that means. John, is there, if I were to say to you the phrase, cut the hard line, <laughs> would that mean anything? <laughs> the hard line. Could it be done? <laughs> yeah, if it's an axe. <laughs> Does anybody at CES have an axe? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Casey. What? Yeah. How many? How many CESs have you been? This through? is only my second CES, so. Uh, so this is different than last this year. This is uh, quite a bit different, um, but you know it's been great. I have to say, there's been enough uh, that has been cool to keep me excited about what we're going to see the rest of the week. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if the, it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny. The, the one lesson I wish I learned was don't drink an enormous thing of water right before you come on the Verge Cast. Oh, no, after no. about an hour. You're feeling what's that. happening? Yeah, yeah. You're feeling like you just want to sneak off the stage. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you're just trying to cheat out. <laughs> I, I, I want to cheat out. Melt off the, off I, see, I feel when I live blog, yeah. the adrenaline. Once the adrenaline hits, of course, there. I don't know how much adrenaline was happening at the Yahoo live blog. Probably not that much. <laughs> but I find that, that when the adrenaline hits you, all worldly needs fade away. No way. I was I was hoping for that. All but, earthly needs yeah. just 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 slide off to the sides of your yeah. of yeah. your existence, not and you're just in the right zone. Now. You're just locked in. Yeah. You're like a you're like a Formula One. Well, you I mean you the... you had I think the best live event thus far of CES. It was the most fun to watch, I think. What was the story with the John Legend stuff at the end? You it know, seemed, they, it, it's uh, it relatively deep and weird for the end of a keynote. He, pl he played three songs, uh, which was like two more than I thought he would do. He started out with <laughs> "Here Comes the Sun," uh, and it was really nice. And then he did two of his own, uh, "Green Light" and "All I Need," I think, or uh, is the the name of the other one? Okay. It's great. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's hands. There's a hand. the we don't know whose hand that you is. You know, underneath that wrist, there's a smartwatch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's, a, there's a metal watch. <laughs> he's like, why did I buy this? It's so ugly. Yeah. He I guess metal watch, that's the person we can cross off the list for next year at CES that we'll be talking to. <laughs> uh, but listen, you know, you guys make great products, and the Virtue guy, total slam dunk. Slam dunk. Uh, and I think on that note, is there yeah. anything else we have to talk about? I really, I mean, I think. Where are we on time? Let me check yeah. my regular watch. Yeah. Nothing meta about this. Also, not hideously ugly. Um, I think we're good. Think what we're do you guys good. think? Should we wrap this up? Yeah, I got a thumbs up yeah. from, really, and that, the rolling yeah. thing? Yeah. Is there a name for this? Please stop. Uh, yeah. Oh. No, this is like wrap it up, right? Yeah. You think wrap it up would be more like, would be more like this. <laughs> like, that's, okay, anyhow, that's the Verge cast uh, for the second night, the second official night of CES. Uh, Tuesday, that, and that was a series of mistakes that we recorded. Yes, 2014. I, the nice thing is, uh, no matter what happened here, <laughs> we're never very, putting it on I, iTunes. I think very few people. This are, is why it doesn't go not, on iTunes. We're not putting it on iTunes, and I, and I like to think very few people were watching it. You're it's, so wrong. It's the it's number on one post on our site is right really? now. Oh, oops. Uh, well, shit happens. <laughs> That's the Verge. <laughs> That's the Verge cast at CES. <laughs> Tuesday night, day two, as we like to call it. Day, day one. Whatever. Day five. Day. And what uh, we'll, be back, we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. Should I say, oh, yeah, you could follow. Whatever. You know how you could follow us. You're I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're stuck with us to this yeah. point, uh, if, you have a disease. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night with more Vergecasty goodness. Also, tomorrow morning, really? Are we doing first again?
Yeah? Okay. Tomorrow morning, Ross Miller and I will be doing First, the only show you need uh, early in the morning at CES. And uh, we're going to be talking about these exact same topics, but not drunk, so that we may, you may actually get some information out of them. And, I uh, mean, and then we'll have another virtual. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. And it's a, another yes who, or no. Who are you asking this to? The group here? I don't know. Are you, are you, just, I'll, I'll just yeah. ask you. Are you stupider when you're drunk or sleepy? Drunk. Okay. Oh, uh... <laughs> Josh is like, both! <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean I, I what do you mean, stupider? I'm real dumb when I'm sleepy. Yeah. I think that I... I can fake it real good I guess I, I guess I'd have to say... A lot of, a lot of head shaking I, in the studio I right now. I, I guess I'd have to say <laughs> sleepy, because when I, when I drink, I feel like I'm just a more awesome, elevated version of myself. <laughs> that's how you feel. Right. No, I don't know what I don't know what everybody else experiences. I'm sure it's terrible, but that's not my problem. I'm drunk. Um, anyhow. Yeah. Good that's night. The Verge cast. Hold on a second. That's the Verge cast. Poor, poor Casey. We'll be back tomorrow night. No, Casey's loving this. I'm loving Look it. it. Look at that. Wow. Uh, and as always, I wish you and your family the very best, <laughs> even though they've all been given meta watches as gifts. Oh God. Right.